All right, next section here, 3.6 is on uh, rational functions. So for these ones, it says, what are the key characteristics to graphing rational functions? Um, so we have some good vocab here. An asymptote is going to be a very important um, vocab term here. So that is an imaginary line that the, a function gets closer and closer to but never touches. Um, all right, and then we have our parent function here is 1 over x. Um, that's like the uh, most basic version of this function. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this. So asymptotes, we usually draw with dashed lines. They're not actually part of the graph. It's just kind of help, helping you guide. Um, and so we have a, a horizontal line and then, or a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Um, so then the actual graph looks something like this. So you can see, actually, let me draw that one a little bit better here. You can see that the, those, uh, the blue lines the, where the graph actually is gets closer and closer to those red asymptotes, but never actually touches them. All right, uh, next up, we'll talk about x and y intercepts. So for both of those, as you can see, um, it's found by turning the other variable into 0. And that's actually true for any graphs, any graph. OK, so next up, um, graphing rational functions in four easy steps. So we're going to find and graph the vertical asymptotes with dashed lines, horizontal asymptotes, intercepts, and then we're going to sketch it. So starting off here, um, we're going to find the vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes occur when x values that make the denominator 0. So to find them, set the denominator equal to 0. And so for number 1 here, I would just say x minus 3 equals 0 x equals 3 is our vertical asymptote, okay? So I put over here, this is very similar to finding the domain, um, except for domain, we would say that x cannot equal 3. This actually makes sense, because remember, the vertical asymptote is not really there. The vertical asymptote is kind of a line saying the graph is not allowed to go here. So that does match up with saying the domain is x it cannot equal 3. It means the same thing as saying the vertical asymptote is at 3, because the graph is not allowed to touch the vertical asymptote. All right, next up, number two. Um, so if we're trying to find the vertical asymptote only, we would just set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So this one would require factoring. So I'm going to think of two numbers and multiply to four and add to five. So that would be four and one. I have, no, I have an a value of one here, so I can just do my shortcut, x plus four, x plus one equals zero. So in this case, we would actually have two vertical asymptotes. Um, we would have one at x equals four and at x equals negative excuse me, negative 4, and x equals um, negative 1 would be my vertical asymptotes. All right, same idea with number 3. So we'll set the denominator equal to 0. In this case, I would GCF a negative x. Um, and then I'll do my factoring here. So two numbers multiply to eight, negative 18 and add to 7, so it would be 9 and negative 2. Uh, a value of 1 here, so I can just say x plus 9, x minus 2. Um, so I'm going to have vertical asymptotes at, I'm actually going to have one at, at 0 because I have that, that variable pulled out front. I'll have one at negative 9, and I'll have one at positive 2. So that one's going to have three vertical asymptotes there. All right, next up here, um, we'll talk about horizontal asymptotes. So to find horizontal asymptotes, it's a much different process. Um, so in, in calculus, you, you really, like it says up here, you plug in infinity or negative infinity for x. But um, for us here, I, I would say we could just um, look at these three cases, OK? So we have to compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. So if the degree of the denominator is higher, it's going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So there is a horizontal asymptote, it's just at 0. We saw in our parent function, which was 1 over x, that we had the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 because it was this case. If they have the same degree, we divide the leading coefficients. Um, horizontal asymptote at y equals that number. So if it's the same, then we divide the leading coefficients. If the numerator has a higher degree, there's no horizontal asymptote. Um, there's actually something that's called a slant asymptote, but we're not going to go into that. So for now, we'll just say no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so um, the first one here, um, I see that the, the numerator is degree 0 and the denominator is degree 1. So I'm going to say this is definitely case 1. The denominator has a higher degree. 
So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Number 5, I see that they have the same degree. So this is case 2. Um, so I'm going to do 10 divided by 5, divide those leading coefficients. And so I'm going to say we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Um, number 6, I see that the denominator has a higher degree. So I'm going to say this is case 1. And so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Um, number 7, I see that the numerator has a higher degree. It's degree 3 versus degree 2. And so this is a case 3. And uh, so there is no horizontal asymptote. And then lastly, we have number 8. Um, so for this one, I see that this is a case 2. They have the same degree. So um, I'm going to divide the leading coefficients and say that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 half. All right, next up for 9 through 11, we're trying to find the intercepts. So um, to find the um, y-intercept, we plug in a 0 for all the x's. So that's going to be 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 28 over 0 plus 14. So you can see that we're really just kind of dividing those numbers out back because everything else gets zeroed out. Um, so that would be negative 28 divided by 14. So that would be negative 2. So we have a y-intercept at negative 2. Or if you want that as a point, actually it's probably better. Um, so I would call it 0 comma negative 2, which makes sense because we plugged in 0 for x and got out negative 2 for y. For the x-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for y. Um, but it's really just the numerator that we're setting it equal to. Um, if you want to think of it like we just multiplied the denominator into the zero, then that's fine. Um, the other thing is we use that denominator to find the vertical asymptote. So you got to kind of think of it like the, uh, the vertical asymptote um, is from the denominator equal to zero, and then the x-intercept is from the numerator equal to zero. All right, so I got to factor this. So we got to think of two numbers and multiply to negative 28 and add to three. Um, so that's going to be a seven and four if I make the four negative. So we're going to have x plus 7, x minus 4. Um, so x equals negative 7, x equals 4. So if I want that in the point form, it would be negative 7 comma 0 and 4 comma 0. Once again, that makes sense because I, I plugged in 0 for y, and those are the x values that I got out. All right, next up, number 10, same idea here. Um, so for the y-intercept, I'm just going to plug in 0. Um, for all the x's. So that is going to be 0 over 5, which is just 0. So my, my y-intercept is going to be 0, comma 0. Um, now I kind of actually already know that my x-intercept is going to be, well, at least one of them is going to be 0. So let me check it out here, though. I'll set the numerator equal to 0, divide by 2, and yes, um, that is 0, and that's not surprising. Remember that the origin is an x-intercept and a y-intercept. All right, lastly here we got number uh, 11. So we'll find the y-intercept first. Um, so 0 squared minus 9 over 0 plus 18. Um, so that'll be negative 9 over 18. That would be negative 1 half. So my y-intercept would be uh, 0 comma negative 1 half. Um, okay. And then for my x-intercept, I'll set the numerator equal to 0. Um, and this one, you can either factor that. You could do x plus 3, x minus 3. Or if you want to solve it with square roots, that's fine. Just a quick reminder, if you create the square root, you have to say plus or minus 3. And so we'll have x-intercepts at negative 3, comma, 0 and at 3, comma, 0. All right, next up, before we actually graph this one, um, and I rewrote it down here, I, I had something that a student drew once that I thought was really helpful for these rational functions to kind of remember everything. So I'm going to have this right here, and I'm going to kind of color code this. If you have any colors, you could do the same thing. Um, so what they did is they said, okay, so when I take the numerator and set it equal to 0, that is the x-intercept. When I take the denominator and set that equal to 0, that is the vertical asymptote. Um, when I divide these numbers back here, the constant numbers, that's actually the y-intercept. And then when I divide these numbers up here, 
um, then that's the horizontal asymptote. Now the only kind of catch with that one with the horizontal asymptotes, that only works if these are in the same degree, but kind of all the other stuff works. So I thought that that was a kind of cool little way to look at it, um, to, to look at the rational function and you can see all of our four key pieces of information there are represented with a different color. Um, so we can go ahead and, and then do this for this problem right here. Um, and so I'll go ahead and find that x-intercepts. So then 3x would equal negative 5. So x would equal negative 5 over 3, um, which is about negative 2, or no, not 2, negative 1.6, or one, we'll call it 1.7 about. Okay. Then we have our vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals negative 2. We see that our y-intercept is going to be at um, 5 over 2, or 2.5. And then we see that our horizontal asymptote is going to be at 3 over 1, which is y equals 3. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw this then. Um, and so my... Um, x-intercept at negative 1.7 will be right about there. <coughs> Get a little better here. Okay, and then the uh, vertical asymptote at negative 2. So it's not allowed to touch that. It got close, but it's not going to touch it. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. And then we have a y-intercept at 2.5. So that'll be there, okay? Okay, so we see these little kind of squiggly shapes here that these make. Um, and I think you can probably tell what this side looks like because we're going to go down the asymptote that way and then approach it. Oops, I'll try to draw that a little better. Approach it that way. Um, we know that kind of because we're going through the uh, x-axis right there and going through the y-axis right there. Then there's going to be another piece over here, so you kind of have to decide, is that above or below? And how I kind of know that that's above, because I know it's not going to hit the x-axis anymore, because I know I only have my one x-intercept here, is at negative 1.7, it's on this side, and so this one must be up here to avoid the x-axis on that side. So just make sure you're uh, avoiding the x-axis on anything that you don't have the uh, x-intercept on. All right, so that's graphing by hand. What we're more, much more going to see is, is multiple choice stuff. Um, so when you see these ones, I would just find your key characteristics and see which ones have those. I always start with the vertical asymptotes. I think the vertical asymptotes are kind of the most crucial piece of information. So I'm going to think of two numbers and multiply to negative 12 and add to 1 because vertical asymptote, we set the denominator equal to 0. Um, so I got x plus 4, x minus 3. So I'm going to have a uh, vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. Um, so, can I cross any of those out? Yeah, I can actually cross out this one. Um, it looks like they put the vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and positive 4 when we wanted negative 4 and positive 3. So there you go. You can see there um, that we already got some uh, one eliminated by some key information here. Um, okay, next up we can find the x-intercept. So if I set the numerator equal to 0, we would have an x-intercept at 4. So 4 comma 0 should be a point on this graph. Um, it's kind of hard to see here. Yeah, I, I can't say that none of those touch at 4. Um, so I'm going to say that that didn't really help me here. Okay, let's go ahead and find the horizontal asymptote then. Well, actually, this one, the degree of the denominator is, is bigger. So for horizontal asymptote, I'm going to go back to the last page and say that this is a case 1. So we should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I don't like uh, option C now um, because um, that one you can see has the horizontal asymptote up here at 1. The other two look like they do have that horizontal asymptote at 0. So what differentiates them? Ah, uh, the y-intercept, the only thing I haven't found yet. So why don't we go ahead and find that? All right, if I find the y-intercept here, I think that should tell me it. So for the y-intercept, I'm going to plug in zeros, and you're just going to be left with those numbers out back. Negative 4 divided by negative 12 is going to be a positive 1 third. So we should have a point at 0 comma positive 1 third. Um, you can see this one is probably at negative 1 third, so that can't be it. So it must be option A. 
So yeah, um, no one piece of information narrowed down that answer, but if we look at all four pieces, you can see we eventually did get our answer.